In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make Tech House in the style of Michael Beebe, Patrick Topping and other Tech House artists. Over the past few months, I've been putting up tutorials on how to make different genres of dance music and today we are focusing on Tech House again as I get so many requests for this style from you guys. Now I'm going to be using Ableton Live 10 but you can follow along in any door and you can download this project file, all of the samples and presets completely free below this video. We're going to be going into the sound selection, we'll be creating a bass from a kick drum as well as sampling a Peruvian ayahuasca ceremony. <laughs> So I really hope you enjoy it. Really quick shout out to one of my students, Ben, who's had his first track signed to Pure Progressive. Nice work, mate. And without further ado, let's hop into the door and get it done. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is get the kick because that is the basis for any house music track. Now I'm gonna be using 909 drum machine sounds because that's gonna help impart that kind of warehouse um, slightly grungy feel, we don't want it too polished. If you do want a production tutorial on more polished tech house, you can click that link above me now. But let's just duplicate that uh, 909 kick and you'll see that I've kind of faded out the end of each one just to tighten it up slightly. Cool, let's add some processing to that to really grunge it up a little bit. So I'm going to add some sort of drum bus. Great plugin in Ableton just to add some distortion. Let's up the drive. Just a little bit. And then let's put an EQ8 after it just to take out the low end for those parts of the track where we want to remove that. And then we can bring it back in. Cool, so that's our kick, boom, done. Now let's work on the, oh no, let's name this bad boy. So let us call it Michael BB Warehouse House, let's call it BB Black Sheep. Have you any tunes? Yes sir, yes sir, three bags full. Let's call it that. Right, on to the groove. Now we're gonna use again um, 909 sounds. So I'm just gonna click on samples, press 909 to filter them. And this is just from a normal um, drum kit that comes with Ableton. I think I downloaded it separately from their website. Um, and we're gonna use another kick, but we're gonna pitch this up kind of like a tom. And we we'll pitch it up one octave tweak the sustain and the release and make sure that only one voice is going to play at once because we don't want those long tom tails kind of um, overlapping each other. Oh, the fan's kicking off. Uh, and let's bring the low end back in on the kick so we can hear what's going on. And now I'm just going to program in a cool little groove on the 16th. Let's just... just to keep things rolling along. That's gonna be our little Tom groove that's done with a kick drum. Duplicate that, consolidate it, and let's work on this sound a little bit. I think we're gonna need some saturation to make it sound a bit more interesting. So I'm gonna use, in fact, I'll use some distortion with the overdrive, uh, just on the end of that drum though. We don't want it to apply to all of the drums. Let's turn it down a bit. Let's take out the first one. Cool. Next, we want to have a clap, a nice short, sharp clap. And again, keeping it simple, we we'll just use a 909 clap and it's gonna help us give us that raw warehouse tech house sound. So let's go to samples again, 909. Um, we go, let's find the clap. Simple, easy. Let's program this in on every other beat. And we're gonna tighten this up a bit by reducing the reverb tail, because there's reverb actually baked into the sample. In fact, we're gonna do that by using the attack, decay, sustain, and release. We'll just reduce the decay a bit.
So nice and grungy, nice and kind of raw. Now we're going to get an open, uh, a closed hat in there. 909 closed hat. And again, every other in between each kick. Just duplicate that. Let's tighten it up a bit. Again, using the attack, decay, sustain and release. So no release, no sustain, and then we'll just tweak the decay. And that's our Tech House beat pretty much. Now we want to create a bass line of some sort. So we're gonna again use a drum to create this bass line, but I'm bouncing it out and having it separate from the main drum bus because I want more control over that bass line. I want to change the notes in it, so it's going to be way easier if I just use a sampler there. So I just load in the simpler, which is Ableton's basic sampler. But again, it doesn't matter which door you're using, you can just load in the basic sampler. Um, again, let's go to 909 and let's use, let's just use the kick again, actually. Kind of, I quite like that idea, just doing it all with the kick. And now we'll program in a kind of bouncy bass line using that kick as the bass sound. We're going to take out that initial transient so it's a bit smoother. I don't have a keyboard with me at the moment, but you could play this in on a MIDI keyboard, just using that um, as an instrument. But I'm just kind of programming this in, making sure that it's bouncing around the kick and the tom and just give, giving that tech house groove that we want. You're not trying to blow anyone away with some amazing bass line here. You just want to get a groove going that's going to make people rock that, that dance floor. Cool, that sounds pretty nice. Just duplicate that. I'm switching it up the second time and then we're gonna duplicate that. So, and then we're gonna tweak the baseline here. So we only want one playing at a time, again, because we don't want that bass note to be running over into the next one, otherwise we'll get a really muddy low end. And I'm going to switch it up the second time. So that's pretty nasty, pretty, um, yeah, pretty gnarly. So let's get some more distortion on there. And I think I'm going to use a saturator this time. I'll just use the Ableton one so you can follow along with the stock plugins. Saturator. And I'm going to put on one of these presets and then just tweak it in a bit. Uh, I don't want that landing on where the kick is playing because it's going to fight with the kick too much. Cool, okay, now to get a really feeling of an old crackly record, which is great for Tech House because it gives it that kind of old school authentic feel. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna load in a vinyl crackle sample that I got ages ago. Really good idea to organize your um, sample bank often. Make sure that you've got samples that you can just draw from whenever you want. Cool, so I'm just gonna drag that in. You can see here, get it nice and low in the mix and listen to the extra atmosphere it adds to this very simple beat. Cool, okay, next thing we're gonna do is add a 16th shuffle beat and this is for when everything's come, kind of coming in 
and we want a bit more yeah a bit more groove to that beat so let's again choose 909 in fact now i'm going to choose an 808 hat because it's got a slightly different timbre from the closed hat we're already using so if we go into the drum here it's just choose one of these 808 uh, closed hats. And the 808 drum machine was another really famous uh, drum machine like the 909, precursor to the 909, unsurprisingly. Um, and now we can just add in some 16ths. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna hold command and we're gonna adjust the velocity of some of them, just to add a bit more dynamics to the, to the groove, like so. And then we're going to just duplicate them across the whole beat. But to make that more interesting, we're going to add some stereo width using the harsh effect. So this is a pretty cool tip. If we load in a normal delay sound, uh, normal delay unit, sorry, um, put it to 100% wet, ping pong, and this is just after the hat. So make sure it's not over the whole drum bus. Um, now we're going to turn off sync, like so, unlink them from each other. And now we are going to create uh, a very short delay between the left and the right, and that's going to give the appearance of stereo width. And it's good to check in mono as well. So on my master channel, I've got a mono switch, which is just a keyboard shortcut so I can switch this utility plug into mono and make sure it still sounds good in mono which it does, but listen to the difference. So this is the hi-hat without the delay on it, and this is with it. Stereo width, nice. Cool. Okay, on to the next bit, and this is quite fun. We're gonna find a sample that's gonna work with this tune. And it's just, it doesn't have to be in the same key. It just needs to sound right and create the vibe that we want. So what I'm going to do is, if you look here, I've just searched for Peruvian vocal a cappella on YouTube and I'm going to just sample something. So what I'll do is I will loop this uh, that we've made and just play some bits of it. Until I find a bit that I like. Cool, okay, now I'm gonna rip that from YouTube. Cool, so I've just dragged in a part of that bloke singing, like an absolute hero. And I'm gonna just warp it to make sure it's in time with my track. So let's just do a bit of that. And let's go into the vocal and use the warp markers to get it. That bit goes out of time a bit. And this is quite painstaking, but it's worth spending the time doing it. And you might just want uh, to take a little bit of it, so that's pretty cool. So you might just kind of loop that little bit, but I quite like the whole thing, so maybe the first part. And if we want to create something else on top that's a bit interesting that we're going to use later on in the um, kind of arrangement, I'm going to put trumpet. And instead of trying to find one on YouTube, I'm just going to listen to Splice. And it doesn't, again, matter if it's not in key because it gives it that kind of discordant feeling, um, slightly raw feeling that we want for this kind of warehouse tech house style. Yep, I'll have that. And 
And all I did was um, search for trumpets in Splice. And again, you can download Splice. You can try it for free below this video. Um, it's really good for searching for samples. I really like that one. That's cool. So I'm just going to drag that in and we're going to use that at random places in the arrangement, which we're about to get to. So this is kind of how it's going to sound. OK, so let's get some arrangement up in this biatch. Uh, I'm going to color that purple. And I'm going to color the trumpet blue just so I can differentiate. And this kind of music, like it doesn't have to change that much over time because this is where people are going to be getting down and dirty in the club. It's yeah, it's part of that vibe, but you do still need to keep the interest going. And that's where the arrangement comes in. So if we just duplicate it several times, we'll start off, as I showed earlier, by having the EQ cutting out the low end of the bass. So let's do that for the first 16 bars or so. And then we can bring it, bring in the beats there. And again, we don't want those shuffle beats in straight away. So let's just delete those. And we don't want the bass in yet. So the track might start off like this. And then the beats, the kick comes in. And then we're going to take out the kick here and introduce the vocal. Except we're going to introduce it uh, and add a little bit of reverb on it. And the way we're going to introduce it is with a filter. So let's again, you know, we're keeping things simple with this style of music. We don't want to overcomplicate and overproduce it. So let's just automate a fil filter sweep to introduce it. And we can switch to the trumpet. switch back to the vocals again and we want to add a little bit of interest at the end of those um, drums just because it does get a bit um, yeah we do want some kind of complexity and interest so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna again choose 909 and go back to my samples like so and just choose another closed hat and I'm gonna use a similar effect the harsh effect as I did on the 808 hats, but I'm going to make it a bit bigger so it's more of a pronounced delay. And this is just to add a little bit of interest at the end of the drums. Like so. Just to have that at the end of the drum loop. You know, and you might want to spend a bit more time kind of getting the trumpet sounding exactly how you want. But again, that's a case of checking things out on Splice and um, tweaking the timing. I mean, you can see here that it says 110 BPM. So actually, if we go into this warp it and it's already warped at 110 PM, that's perfect. I'll choose Complex Pro because it's usually best for things like uh, vocals and melodic elements. I quite like just the first bit though, so let's do that. So that's that's a pretty cool little riff there, little loop. Uh, and now let's move on to the mixing bit. So at the moment we're really clipping on the on the master there, and you could mix into a limiter. 
I think that's a bit sloppy personally. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to reduce the kick to minus 10, which is four decibels lower than it was before. And I'm going to grab all of my drums and take those down by four as well. Uh, take the vinyl and the bass and the vocal and the trumpet all down by four. So now we should have a bit more headroom. Now something you can do that's pretty cool to get the drums sounding a bit more cohesive and a bit more grungy is add one of those uh, drum bus plugins again onto it. If you're not using Ableton Live, then you can use compression and a bit of saturation to achieve a similar effect. But I'm just gonna, that bell, should I sample that bell? Nah, not right for this track. So it's just kind of bringing those drums together, crunching them up a bit, that's off. Very subtle. You know, that's quite an extreme effect there. Let's use that though. And for uh, little breaks like this, before you go back into the drop, you might, uh, let's do that here. We're gonna use the filter again, and we're gonna filter out the drums and the bass, just so there's more of an impact on the drop when it comes in again. That's too much drum buster. So let's get an EQ, uh, sorry, an auto filter on the bass, and we're just gonna take it down, like so. Just shut up my mate from disturbing me when I'm writing tunes. Reminds me of Liam Howlett. For F's sake, man, I'm trying to write this effing tune. So we're just gonna be taking down that um, filter there. And again, we can have that on the claps as well. And we need to create a moment of tension before the drop. Whoops, I didn't mean to silence it. So I might do that here actually, let's get that um, back in. So there you have it guys, that's how to make a warehouse style Michael BB style tech house track. Don't forget to download the project file, all of the samples and presets are completely free below this video. And if you want more in-depth coaching from me, do check out my eight week EDM production masterclass. Some of our students have gone on to release on Armada and Juna Beats and many, many other world-class labels. So if you do wanna check that out, click the link below this video. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to join me next time. And until then, cheers and happy producing.